will battle it out with Reverend Raphael Warnock. All eyes are on Georgia because the results of those two races will determine whether the Republican Party keeps their majority in the U.S. Senate, what Pence referred to as the last line of defense from total Democratic control in Washington. A Fox 5 Insider Advantage poll we released earlier this week shows both races are extremely tight, and Pence urged conservatives to get out and vote. I'm here because I stand with President Donald Trump. And I'm here because President Donald Trump and I stand with Senator David Perdue and Senator Kelly Leffler. We need Georgia to defend the majority on January 5th, 2021. Coming up in our next hour, I'll have what Pence said about the election and the Trump campaign's pledge to continue to fight. In Cherokee County, Claire Sims, Fox 5 News. Thank you, Claire. And Georgia Democrats held a news conference calling out both sitting Republican senators ahead of the vice president's visit today. State Senator Jen Jordan and State Representative Eric Allen held a news conference in Canton where they contend Senators Purdue and Leffler have put their political and financial interests ahead of securing much needed coronavirus relief for Georgia families. Georgia's already waited 213 days on corona, coronavirus relief. David Perdue and Kelly Loeffler are still blocking the desperately needed aid for our communities and our state. We really do need to give President-elect Joe Biden the opportunity to do the things that he was elected to do, namely fight this virus and defeat it. The Democratic lawmakers are pushing for John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock to be elected into the Senate because they say they will make coronavirus relief a priority. DeKalb County has fired an election manager after a series of errors were uncovered during the state-ordered audit of the presidential race. The county released a statement reading in part, it has come to our attention that a DeKalb VRE manager, who is now a former employee, failed to follow our established protocols and blatantly disregarded the required processes we utilize to account for and record all legal and verified ballots. The county went on to say the manager's error caused their previous recertification and a second error kept 59 ballots from originally being counted. Well, in the next 20 to 30 minutes, Governor Brian Kemp will address Georgians and the state of the presidential election here. His address comes as Georgia's Secretary of State certified the state's election results today, saying numbers don't lie. Those numbers show President-elect Joe Biden came out more than 12,000 votes ahead of President Trump. But the Secretary of State has also called for changes when it comes to the state election laws. Fox 5's Brooke Zahner explains. Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger took no questions at a news conference at the state capitol this morning. He says he wants to work with Governor Kemp and the state legislature to build more trust in the voting system. Raffensperger suggests a number of reforms to the vote system here in Georgia. He wants to reform the absentee ballot process, proposing more security around it. One idea is to require a photo ID to request an absentee ballot. Raffensperger says there also needs to be stricter controls on challenging voter registration for people who may have died, moved, or may just be ineligible to vote. He also proposes the Secretary of State's office be allowed to intervene in counties that are having issues with election operations. I'd like to see legislation that allows for the state to intervene in counties that have systemic ongoing problems in administering elections. We need to have a remedy that allows the state to address problem areas and get those counties moving in the right direction. Once the results are certified, President Trump can request a recount since the margin of the loss was by less than half a percent. Reporting outside the state capitol, Brooks Honor, Fox 5 News. And again, just moments ago, the Secretary of State's office ha officially certified those election results. Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger has said he fully expects the president to request that recount. Let's give you a live look here now at our Georgia Power Camera as we shift our attention to the forecast here at the end of the week. Lots of sunshine again, started off cool, and we warmed up pretty nicely 
today. Chief Meteorologist David Chanley joining us live. Now, I got a little hot in my jacket, actually, this afternoon. <laughs> it's all about the layers. That's what right. it is, indeed. <laughs> we were cooler this morning, although not as cool. A little milder this afternoon. Look at our temperatures out there in the 4 o'clock hour. 70 here, 72 down in noon, and even warm in the North Georgia mountains. Blairsville checking in at 65. So tonight, we are going to be clear, and we're going to be milder. The sun's setting there at 532. We'll drop off into the 50s fairly quickly, but we'll kind of hang out in the 50s during the course of the evening. And we'll have to put up with the possibility of some fog in here by early on your Saturday morning, especially out here to the east and to the west of Metro Atlanta. Visibility's down in some areas, down below a quarter of a mile. We're going to talk about our big warm-up this weekend and the next chance of rain. It's coming your way in a few minutes. Thanks, David. More than 11.7 million Americans have tested positive for coronavirus. The U.S. set another new record Thursday for daily COVID infections, more than 187,000. A growing number of states have put new restrictions in place as they try to slow the spread. Public health officials have now pleaded with the public to get vaccinated as soon as possible. The process of the speed did not compromise at all safety, nor did it compromise scientific integrity. Today, Pfizer asked the FDA for emergency use approval of its vaccine candidate. The company says its vaccine is 95 percent effective in large scale trials. Analysts expect Moderna, which is another leading candidate, will send data to the FDA later this month. And the spike in COVID cases has led to the CDC advising Americans not to travel this Thanksgiving. They encourage everyone instead to celebrate with those inside your home. The rise in cases is a major cause for concern among school superintendents across the state. Coming up later, we're going to learn more about the steps they're taking to keep COVID out of schools. Well, President Trump remains determined to serve a second term in the White House. Coming up, the meeting he held that some say is an attempt to secure a second term. And a flamethrower spotted on top of a New York public transit bus. This viral video coming up. You're watching Fox 5 News at 430 with Christine Spiro and Chief Meteorologist David Chandley. Managers at the Tyson Food Plant in Waterloo, Iowa, are accused of placing bets on how many employees would test positive for COVID-19. The lawsuit was filed this week by the son of an employee who died from the virus. The suit alleges Tyson managers, Tyson managers rather, engaged in fraudulent misrepresentation, gross negligence, and incorrigible and willful wanton disregard for employee safety. According to court documents, high-level executives of the company lobbied White House officials for protection from efforts to contain the virus. Tyson Foods denies the allegations. And take a look at this. A rapper is spotted shooting a flamethrower from the top of this occupied Metro bus in New York City. The incident happened during rush hour earlier this month. A man who goes by the name Dupree God pulled off the dangerous stunt. He said it was part of a music video shoot. No one was hurt, but the bus was damaged. Dupree surrendered to police Wednesday. They charged him with reckless endangerment and criminal possession of a weapon. And just a reminder, changes are coming to Fox 5 News at 4.30 starting this Monday. You can catch us for a full hour of Fox 5 News at 4. We'll have more of the stories you care about. Fox 5 News at 4 begins on Monday. And don't worry, Judge Judy fans, that will be on from 3 to 4 p.m. You'll still get your full hour. All right, time now to take a look at what's ahead on Fox 5 News at 5. Fox 5 anchor Tom Haynes joins us now with a preview. So much news to cover these days. Yeah, Christine. really is. Coming up all new and next at 5 tonight, we're following the latest developments out of Buckhead. One person has been shot following a shooting near Lenox Square. We'll have the very latest developments coming up. And the CDC has advised Americans to stay home this Thanksgiving, but not everyone will listen. What you need to know if you still plan to travel. All of that and so much more when you join us new and next for Fox 5 News at 5. It starts right after the break.